and welcome to Glasgow Raiders Nation with me, your host, Owen James, a channel that brings you your team every single day. Uh, no video this morning because just did not feel like making a video uh, this morning. Um, look, I want to speak honestly. I'm going to speak openly. I'm going to speak about how I honestly believe, what I honestly think, what I honestly believe. And if you don't like it, well, tough luck. I don't care. Um, I know what I'm about to say will not please everyone. I know what I... What I want to say will not please everybody, but you know what? You can't please everyone all the time. And football is a game of opinions, and it's about having the maturity to accept that people have different opinions to you. And if you don't respect that opinion, then that's your business. You know, this we are in, unfortunately, I mean, I don't really want to make this into politicals, but we are in a very dangerous position in this country where if someone has a, a different view to you, you seem to now be... Uh, guilty of some sort of hate crime or get guilty of some sort of, um, you know, vicious, nasty assault and need to be locked up for it, which, you know, is, is is the way that some of the fans, I think, see any comments that are made about his his Royal Highness Prince Tav or, you know, about, uh, about the board or about anything like that. And I think there are a proportion within the fan base who are happy clappers and are very happy with whatever and don't really care about the fact we finish second to Celtic every, every single season, I'll be honest with you. And I know that might make me unpopular, but I do genuinely feel that within the fan base, and it is a small minority that feel that way. Um, look, put out a post earlier on the community tab um, where I spoke, I thought, very openly, very honestly about what my feelings were about where the club is at this moment in time. Right, so look, let's be honest. We went out last night. Yes, a lot of that was down to that ridiculous decision. It was never a sending off. It was never a second yellow card. Um, the referee was absolutely, genuinely atrocious. And I know people will say, well, you lost. Well, of course, but you're going to say that the ref was atrocious when you lost. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Fair criticism. But I, I would challenge anybody who is not a Celtic fan, anybody who is neutral um, in terms of who they support, you know, to go back and watch that game and look at some of the decisions that were taken in that game. The fact that whenever a Rangers player seemed to commit a foul, it was always uh, resulted in a yellow card. Yet Dynamo Kiev, uh, on a number of occasions, committed exceptionally cynical fouls uh, and got away with it. Got away with it time after time after time, pulling back, kicking through. There was the foul on McCausland. None of them ever resulted in a yellow card. It seemed that they could do whatever they wanted and get away with it. Whereas Rangers, any tackle, any foul seemed to result in some very dodgy, dodgy yellow cards. Look, I'm not saying anything the referee is dodgy. I'm just saying that it was very, he had a very bad performance, that he was genuinely dreadful um, and should never be allowed to referee in the uh, Euro uh, Europa League or the Champions League again this season. So, yeah, that is partly down to it. But that's not the whole story, guys. You know, and as I said, as I said, you know, on the stream yesterday, there's a lot of teams who have progressed with 10 men. There's a lot of teams who go down to 10 men and sometimes actually play better and actually go through uh, with 10 men. So I don't think, you know, that is the sole reason that we lost. And I think if, if you are just putting us losing down to that yellow card, you are ignoring a lot of what actually happened last night. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who do ignore what happened last night. I mean, let's take some examples. Uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, there was very little cutting edge. There was very little clinical finish it, finishing. Uh, I can't remember Bruce Chan, their goalkeeper, actually making a save, an outstanding save in the entire game. At no point did I see him make a save that you were like, wow, that is fantastic. He's, he's definitely saved a goal there. Um, at no point did that happen during the game last night. So look, I think that's that's one thing we've got to kind of admit. You know, yes, we can hide behind the whole, you know, that the referee was shit, the referee was terrible, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I, I honestly feel that, yes, the referee was very, very bad. Um, but by that same token, that is not the only reason we lost. It is definitely not the only reason we lost. Um, you know, at the end of the day... Like I said, lack of clinical clinicalness in front of goal. Our defence was absolutely shocking. Again, um, I thought Davis could have done a lot more to close down the uh, defender. Um, the, sorry, the strike, the attacker who scored the goal, the first goal. Um, it was a perplexing decision by Phil Clemon as well to bring Davis on at left back when Robbie Fraser, I believe, was on the bench last night. 
Let's just check that fact. Yes, Robbie Fraser was on the bench last night. Robbie Fraser, who deputised at left back towards the end of last season, and I thought did a very, very good job at left back. Uh, so why wasn't Robbie Fraser brought? I honestly think Robbie Fraser would have been a much better bet at left back than someone who is a left, left-sided left centre half. A natural left-footed left back, playing left back is better than some left-footed centre half, who's actually not that great playing there. So I thought that was a very, very weird decision. Um you know, I've read a lot this morning about comments on the game um, and this afternoon, you know, in terms of the fact that it was the ref's fault, it was this person's fault, Lawrence was rubbish. Yes, Lawrence was rubbish. Uh, it was Diamande's fault for giving the ball away. Um, and, it, and yet, these people are right. It seems to be everybody's fault but James Tavernier's. James Tavernier was man of the match last night in their eyes. James Tavernier was 10 out of 10 last night. He was absolutely outstanding. If you re read some of these comments, I mean, Genuinely, I, I think that he is developing a cult status, among, and, it, and I'm not talking about a cult status in the terms of the way some footballers do, like Gaza or Laudrup. I'm talking, talking Jonestown Massacre, uh, David Koresh style uh, cult. Um, James Tavernier was fucking shocking last night. He was absolutely dreadful last night, and. I'm sorry, but, you know, yes, I respect your opinion if you thought he played well last night, but defensively, which is what he's paid to do, he was skinned time after time after time after time last night. Hundreds of, loads of times he was skinned in the game last night. He was absolutely pathetic last night. And he's a captain. At 10 men down, your captain needs to stand up and lead. At no point did he do that after Jeff Tay was... was, was uh, you know, was sent off. We need a real captain. We haven't got a real captain. Sorry, but if you think James Tavernier is a real captain, then I'm sorry you don't know what a football captain is. You really genuinely don't know what a captain needs to do on, on a football field. He doesn't lead by example. He's one of the worst players on the pitch, game after game after game. Yes, he, he was a good player for Rangers. Yes, he has been a great servant for Rangers. And yes, his stats and figures are outstanding. Yes, he has done very well in the past for Rangers. But since March last year, he has been genuinely one of our worst players and has got worse game by game by game and should not, under any circumstances, be starting for Rangers this season. Fact. Just look at how he plays. Look at how teams attack our right side game after game after game. Look at how Maida goes past him as if he isn't there. Look at how Kabaev last night skinned him inside out several times. I, I don't get it. I don't get this Tav, Tav praise. And I think with some of our fans, it, it is the case that Tav is becoming bigger than the club. That the club is no longer Glasgow Rangers FC. It is Tav FC in their eyes. I genuinely feel, like I said, I know people won't like this, but you know what? I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. But what else? I think last night, um, you know, the other thing is when you go down to 10 men, Clement did the right thing. He went 4-4-1. Um, I don't think the substitution was right. I think he should have put Sterling on for Lawrence, who Lawrence was, was anonymous again last night. He is not a proper 10. Out of the four 10s we have at the club, uh, Hadji... Cantwell, Lowry and Lawrence. Now, I know with Hadji and Cantwell, there is the whole they want to leave or they don't want to, whatever around that. But out of the four tens, Lawrence is the worst of the four. He's not really a 10. He's more a wide man or he's more an eight. He's not a 10. And he proved this game after game that he's not a 10. And last night he was absolutely atrocious. He was anonymous. I think he should have been taken off. I think we should have gone with Barron and Sterling in the middle to really sort of fasten that midfield up but Baron and Sterling sit in front of that back four don't give them any space don't give them any room basically give them a back six to get through then leave it then to three those to Cheney wide right to Dio wide left and Dessas through the middle and we'll get to Dessas in a minute to take all the danger forward that's what we needed to do last night so I did think that decision to take off uh, Dio and bring on Sterling, whilst it was right to bring on Sterling, he took off the wrong player, in my opinion. In addition to that, I think he should have brought Danio on, even though Danio is not 100% not fit for Dessas, because Dessas was absolutely atrocious last night. Dessas was appalling last night. I mean, for me, there was a couple of things. One, he was more interested in rolling around on the ground and moaning at the referee rather than actually playing football. And the second thing about him last night is... When you're playing with 10 men, that system requires you, when you're playing 4-4-1, um, to have a centre forward who can trap the ball, hold the ball up and allow your team to get out, to buy you time to break out when you are down to 10 men. Dessers did not hold the ball up at all. 
The guy couldn't trap a bag of cement. He was absolutely appalling last night. He lost. He didn't jump. When he did jump, he lost out. He couldn't hold the ball up. Every time he got it, he conceded possession. He was absolutely shocking last night. Uh, I would have brought Dania on. I really would have given Dania the last 10, 15 minutes at least. Yes, it might have resulted in us going to extra time. But Dania, for me, couldn't have done any worse. Could not have done any worse. And Clement, don't come at me with this. Oh, well, he's not fit. We don't want him to get injured. Well, Clement's already said that he is fit and he's going to get minutes. So there's nothing wrong with him. So he will play. Um, so that, you know, that's... That's just a few things I picked up from the game last night. On the positive side, I thought Connor Barron was excellent again last night. I thought Connor was brilliant last night. The way he always offered for the ball, the way he got stuck in, he fought, he battled for everything. Connor Barron was absolutely amazing last night. Superb. I thought John Suter was absolutely superb last night. Absolutely fantastic last night. No, John Suter put his body on the line a number of times, got back and made blocks was absolutely fantastic. So I think John Suter was very, very good. And for me, it was between Suter and Barron for the Rangers man of the match last night. They were both very, very good last night. On, on the other side of it, you know, I think the a lot of the blame for what is happening at this club is attached to this board, to the fact that this board have massively, hugely mismanaged this club now for the last God knows how long. Since well, if we, even if we take it just since fifty five, we've had the Australia debacle. We've had the failure to build on that league title. We've had the failure to back their managers. We've had managers sacked and managers hired in completely the wrong way. The way that Gio was put in a position where his replacement was sat watching a game that Gio was managing, lording it over him was absolutely disgusting. To appoint a manager who was absolutely clueless and was like appointing a PE teacher a primary school PE teacher, not a secondary school PE teacher. Um, primary school that PE teacher down here teaches four to 11-year-olds. Um, so, you know, to run a football team, you know, the decisions that the board have made in terms of backing the signings that Michael Beale made, of giving Michael Beale that budget, of signing off on ridiculous contracts like the one to Conor Goldson, like the one to James Tavernier, like the one they were paying Kamar Roof up until he left to sign up on the contracts for Lammers, for Dessas, 27 grand a week, for Matondo, 24 grand a week. It's just, it's a joke. They signed off on all these deals. The Hamden debacle, the, the whole Hamden Ibrox debacle, we wouldn't have been in Hamden Park last night had the rep board managed this stadium rebuild correctly. It's down to them. And they can go on about late deliveries and late this and late that. It's down to scheduling. It's down to them working through it. It's down to them managing a project which they cannot do john bennett the park boy and the rest of them couldn't manage a piss up in a fucking brewery they couldn't run a bath i wouldn't trust them to look after my dog let alone a football club john bennett needs to go and he needs to go now the man is an embarrassment to our football club i mean the fact that we've lost our ceo james bisgrove no matter what you thought of james bisgrove at least he took the footballing decisions on a day-to-day -day basis and controlled a lot of went on the, on the club the club should be run by a CEO who knows what he's doing, by a director of football or recruitment who knows what he's doing, and the manager of the club. That's who should be running the club. At the end of the day, the footballing side of the operation should be run by them. The CEO can run, run along with his marketing managers, his communications managers. He can run the football club. The board are there in an advisory capacity and in a funding capacity and in an overseeing capacity. They are not there to have a direct control over what goes on day to day because Park Jr., Halstead, Bennett, whoever, can, like I said, cannot run a bath. I wouldn't let, I would not let John Bennett or Douglas Park's son look after my dog, for God's sake, let alone a football club. I mean, this this club, I've been run into the ground by this this board. They, we are being put in a position where, like I said, we are, are, are we are look whether we like it or not, we are light years at the moment financially behind Celtic because of Celtic qualifying season in season out for the Champions League. And we'll get to signings in a minute. Um, you know, we are light years behind them in terms of the way they run. You know, they are, and I hate saying this because I fucking hate them with a passion, but they their club is a 10 times better run than our club is. It is run better than, whether we like it or not. And the reason we know it's better run than it is because look at what they've done in the last 12 years. How many trophies they've won compared to how many trophies we've won. Their board have made good decisions in terms of hiring managers, signing players, retaining players, contracts. Our board have made bad hires, 
not back their manager, not renewed contracts, allowed out of, allowed players to walk for nothing rather than selling them. They've sold Jota 25 million, for example. That's one example of the other players they've sold for massive profits, which have then helped them redevelop their squad. All things we have not done up until we're starting to do it now. The board are not fit for purpose. And you can talk about FFP watch and this watch. There wouldn't be a need for FFP watch if the board actually ran the club properly and sold players when they were at the height of their value. Morelos, Kent, Kamara. That could have raised nigh on 50, 60 million pounds for the club. But instead, they let those players run down their contracts. OK, not Kamara. He went for five mil. He could have been sold for a lot more. I think he went for, I think he went for something like 8.6 million from Leeds to Ren. Now, he could have gone for a lot more than the five mil we got for him if he'd been sold at the peak of his powers. Then you've got, like I said, Morel Morelos and Kent. You could have got over 30 million for the pair of those at the height of their powers. Again, bad decisions by the board. Bad decisions all the time at every turn. At every turn. You look at this board and how they've run it. And like I said, you can say, oh, well, they, you know, they can't just throw money. At. I'm not asking them to just throw their own money at it. I'm asking them to actually spend money that we generate from selling players because those players' contracts have been governed correctly and those players have been allowed, not allowed to run their contracts down. And they've been sold when it is they are at the peak of their powers, when we can get the most money for them to put back into the squad like they do across the city. There's a good chance they're going to get 25, 30 million for Matt O'Reilly, which will then be reinvested into their squad. The way it works. And this board have only just seemed to be finally kind of coming round to it. There's so many more things. Like the Hamden debacle is ridiculous. The way that whole situation was governed, the silence, the, the keeping the fans in the dark, absolute disaster. If we'd been at Ibrox last night, we would have won that game because the, the passion and the power of our crowd would have helped roar us onto victory. And I think would have intimidated the ref to some degree as well. And in terms of signings now, don't expect a lot. Don't expect a lot. We need a lot. We need a right back. We need a centre back. We need a six. We need a 10. We need a winger. We need a striker. God, we need a striker. You know, these are the positions we need to look at, but we're not going to be able to bring in those players we were perhaps looking at before now because we've lost that £40 million from the Champions League. That £40 million is gone, as Philippe Clermont himself said at the press conference last night. We're going to take under half of that. You get £21.5 million for winning the Europa League. That is just over half what you get for participating in the Champions League. Never mind win bonuses and things like that. So, I'm sorry. And to quote Chris Boyd from last season, those people are going about it's more our level. Give me peace. Give me peace. That is the most ridiculous comment I have ever heard in my entire life. We are not going to win the Europa League. Not this season. It's not about Europe for me at this moment in time. It's not about winning competitions. It's about money. That's all it's about. It's about getting money to develop and to compete nationally, to win our domestic title, to win our domestic cup. And then we bring in more money. Then we invest. Then we bring in more money, invest. And then we can start to look at competing in Europe. If we can't compete in Scotland, we're not going to be able to compete in the Europa League or in the Champions League. Fact. But the Champions League is about money. That's all it's about for a team like Rangers. Celtic goes into Champions League every year, gets smashed every single year. But guess what? They're going to get 40 million this year, which is 20 million more than we're going to get, at least minimum. Again, we are in danger of becoming Borussia Dortmund to their Bayern Munich. Scotland is in danger of becoming like the Bundesliga, where one team dominates it and the occasionally one year in three or one year in four, someone who is not Bayern Munich wins the league, like Bayer Leverkusen did last season. And that's not how this league needs to go. And that's not the standards this club is, is, is at. Philippe Clermont and Niels Copper need time. I agree with that. They need time. Will they get time? I don't know. Is this a one window rebuild? No, it's not. Why is it not? Because the board have put us in this position where the club is in an absolute state and needs a massive rebuild. If the board had helped and actually backed managers, done contracts properly, et cetera, et cetera, we wouldn't be in a situation where Clement would be having to completely overhaul and rebuild this squad. And this squad we've currently got, and I know there are still 15, 16 days left in the transfer window, is substantially weaker than last season's squad, which was substantially weaker than the squad of 50, 155. But it's substantially weaker even than the squad the season before that. Squad that got to the Europa League final. So the squad has got progressively weaker and is getting progressively weaker. I don't think there'll be a great deal of a, a number of arrivals. I think there'll be loans, cheap deals, because that, that's all we can afford now. And why is that? Because the Port have screwed up, because the players have screwed up last night and the referees screwed up. There's a whole series of contributing factors, but it's not just the referee's decision that lost us that game last night. 
there is a number of factors that lost us that game last night. Guys, you might not like this. And I know what if you don't, do what you want. Comment what you want. But that's how I honestly feel. And the reason I feel this way is because I'm sick to death of coming second to them. I am sick to death of being the laughing stock because they constantly take the piss out of us all the time because you skin FC. Oh, when was the last thing you won? Oh, look, you've got a taking part trophy. You've got a coefficient trophy. Oh, you've got a playing in Europe after Christmas trophy. It's, it's pissing me off. This club, I I, came, I became a Rangers fan. I, I I chose Rangers because that's because I love the club. Because of Chris Woods, Graham Sooners, I fell in love with the club. So since 86, 87, I've grown up, yes, I may be spoiled by the Sooners years, the Walter Smith years, the Advocat years, the Big Eck years, all those years, seeing us win nine in a row, seeing us win trophies, win doubles, win trebles, things like that. But that's the standards this club expects. The standard is not finishing second to Celtic and having a good cup run and winning a League Cup. That's not the standards. That is not the standards. And if you think that's the standards, then you obviously don't understand Rangers history. Let me know what you think, guys, anyway. Thanks for watching. As always on the way out, please smash that like. And remember always, we are the people.